stand for the reading of the scripture found in Psalm 150. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise the God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbre and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Give God the hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. For he woke us up this morning. He gave us breath this morning. He clothed us in our right minds this morning. We're not worried about yesterday, but this morning he blessed us. And as we go forth in prayer, let's go forth in praise, glorifying his holy name. Let us pray. Father God, as we go forth in praise, we praise you, Father, for who you are. We praise you for what you've done for us, Father. We thank you, Father, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We worship the King of Kings and the mighty, mighty God that we serve, the almighty God. We worship you, Lord and Master. We worship you, creator of heaven and earth. We worship you. And Father, we praise you because you are worthy of the high praise. You're worthy of the high praise, Father. For if it wasn't for you, where would we be this morning? Send your anointing, Father. Send your anointing. Yeah. Oh, Father, we need you today. Yeah. Oh, Father, some of us have heavy hearts. Some of us have down and tried to experience. But Father, you said, come unto you, all those that are heavy laden. You will give us rest for your soul. So Father, we're coming to you in the only name that we know how. We're coming to you in the name of Jesus. The one that opens the door to your heart, Father. The one who makes a way out of no way. We're coming to you, Lord, because we know in coming to you. Yeah. We have the picture. Send your anointing upon our pastor. Yes. As he prepares to preach your word, Father. Anoint him with all that is you, Father. Let your wisdom, understanding, and knowledge perpetrate through him, Father. And let it touch our hearts, our minds, and our souls. And, Father, it will prick us. And it will cultivate us. It will help us to grow. It will cast out all those things that are not like you. Your word will grow in us, Father, and bear much fruit because of your servant, Father. Not only bless him, Father, and meet every need in his life, but bless his family. Bless his wife and his children. Bless their parents, Father. Bless Metropolitan Church family. Father, you, we may not know the needs that we have, but you know them, Father, so bless them right now. Father, you didn't say that all things will be good, but you said they will work together for good. To those who love you, for those who are called according to your purpose, Father. And your purpose is for us to praise you. Your purpose for us is to be a light and darkness in a dark world. Your purpose is for us to love unconditionally. Your purpose is for us to forgive as you have forgiven us. Your purpose is for us to spread the good news of the gospel. So as we stand on this corner, Father, a bit of this in 14, let us be that beacon of light. The people will come and say, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. Bless us, anoint us, fill us, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us, Father. That you may give all the glory. You may get all the praise. Because we love you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank <laughs> you.
And he said, I just wanted to catch up with you, Kwame, because I know as a pastor, you know everybody else's problems, and you don't get to share your problems a lot of times with a whole lot of people. And he said, I just wanted to call to see if you needed to vent. And saints of God, as I thought about that in a Christian context, saints of God, that is what prayer time is unto the God of our salvation. Because God says he wants to know all about our problems, he wants to know all about our situations, and he wants to know all about our particular storms. And you are saying to me, Pastor Jones, I got a theological argument with you today, because you always tell us that you ought to come boldly to the throne of grace to ask for help in your time of trouble. Why would you tell me right now during this altar call that I'm supposed to be vending unto the Lord? Well, saints of God, I hate to bust your bubble, but the songwriter dipped his pen in the ink of inspiration and said that just have a little talk to Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. He will answer by and by the saints of God. I want you to know that there is no failure in God because God can move you from victory to a place of victory, saints of God. You just got to be able to trust God with your whole heart. And if you're standing in the need of prayer right now, you may but you won't leave here like you came, all bound, oppressed, afflicted, sick or lame, because God will cause a shift to transpire in your spirit, because God wants you to know that you are indeed more than a conqueror through him who first loved us. Why should you hold on to your problems? You better talk your way out of your trials. Talk your way out of your test because God will make a way somehow. You just got to be able to trust God even when you cannot trace Him. Because the saints of old used to say way back in the day that He will never put more on you than you can do. And I know as you are venting, your heart is heavy. God 
want you to know he does not want you to worry about anything. But instead, your prayer and supplication, he just wants you to let your request be made known unto him. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding should keep your heart and mind in perfect peace. And if you didn't get a good night's sleep last night because you're burning over a situation that's going on in your family, that's going on in your job, you don't know if you're going to get a peace slip on your job anymore. But I want you to know, don't worry about that peace slip. God's got your life covered with the precious blood of the Lamb. And he wants you to know that you will overcome through the blood of the Lamb and by the words of your testimony. So just sit back and watch God work things out for your good. Is there anybody in here besides me and Gooch who wants to give 
second verse, my administrative assistant came into my office this morning and said, Pastor, I apologize. I got caught up in the plethora of emails that you sent me and I have the wrong sermon in the bulletin today. And I said, no problem whatsoever. I won't throw you under the bus because you are a great blessing to the body of Christ. And I thank God for all that you do. And you're just excited about the series when God moves and you're telling me, Pastor, go ahead and conclude that series. And we will do that on next week in the message entitled, It's Time to Throw Down. Right. Because when Jesus is in the house, there's going to be some furniture moving. Yeah. People are not operating in the things of God and walking by faith. But that's for next week, saints of God. And don't forget on Thursday, Wednesday, I'm sorry, night, we will be here in the sanctuary of our God for our pre-Thanksgiving service. And 
Deacon Joe Latif will be bringing forth the particular message. He told me he's been praying, he's been studying, and he's been seeking the face of God. So we look forward to a time in the Lord. It says in the 103rd Psalm, verses 1 through 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of his benefits. Put the spiritual spotlight on verse number one. Once again, reading from the easy to read version, it says, My soul praises the Lord. Every fiber and part of me praise his holy name. As you go to your seat, why don't you look at your neighbor and tell him in a smart way, I ain't holding nothing back. I ain't holding nothing back. Hang that up on the line of your mind and let the Holy Ghost flow on it. Nisi, I ain't holding nothing back. My brothers and my sisters, when one looks at the 103rd division of the Psalms, and how King David is giving praise to God for his endless mercies, which are new every morning. Seeing that morning by morning, new mercies we see. And all that we ever needed, the Lord's hand has provided. Yeah. Because I want you to know, saints of God, that I'm not holding this microphone in my hand. Because I've been so good in my 51 years of living. But I'm giving this microphone in my hand right now. Because it is because of the Lord's mercies that I'm not consumed. Yes, saints of God, it simply goes without saying. On this pre-Thanksgiving worship service. That when you just think about all of the remarkable, incredible, and unbelievable things that God has done for you day after day down through the years. You can't help but repeat yourself over and over again like a broken record. Rejoice in the Lord. Always again I say rejoice. As the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 4. Because I know that you may be being ridiculed on your job, in your career, and at your home. But God says you shouldn't be focused in on all of that. Because he has already told you that no weapon that is formed against you shall ever be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Because this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. Therefore, instead of looking at the problematic people in your life, God says unto you today, Metropolitan, that you got to think a little higher. And you got to be able to look to the hills from which cometh your help and know that all of your help comes from the Lord. Because if there anybody in here today that knows that it's not just a cute spiritual cliche say to God, it is in fact a spiritual truth and reality that God is good and all the time God is good even on a bad and a cloudy day. Yes, God is good all the time, saints of God. But you know for yourself that every time you turn around, God just keeps on making a way out of no way and doing things for you that will literally have you lifting up your hands and shouting with the voice of triumph and shouting with the voice of praise like blind Bartimaeus did when he came into the revelation knowledge that Jesus was in his concentric circle of contact because saints of God when you are desperate for the divine and you need him to do something for you that you know no other power can do you don't worry about what people got to say about you because you can give a thick hot chocolate what people got to say about you the only thing that you should be focused on is the Lord and the God of your salvation because God wants you to know that he has a name that is
is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Yeah. Yeah. To the glory of God the Father. Because God wants you to know, you need to touch somebody and tell them that God's generosity is literally off the charts. God's generosity is off the chain. And last but not least, God's generosity covers a whole lot of ground. But there is no area in your life or in my life as well that you can't point to in the here and now and say that God is not at work <laughs> and doing something that's downright amazing yeah. here, there, and everywhere you yeah. turn. That is why as a child of God, you want to come back when you know that God is at work in your life and giving you beauty for your ashes. Uh -huh. The all the joy for your morning yeah. and the glory and the praise, you ought to come back like that one leper, fall down on your knees and tell the Lord, thank you, because you shouldn't be running with the crowd. You should be running with the power of God that is in your feet. Because yeah. is there anybody in here that knows that this goodness is running after you and that the goodness of the Lord is trying to track you down and bless you beyond belief and if you want the blessings of the Lord to become manifest in your life, you gotta be obedient to the voice of the Lord because when you are obedient to the voice of the Lord, God will allow you to get over whatever hurdle that is coming your way because he will be the wind beneath your wings and he will let you know, saints of God, that you can and that do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Yeah. Yeah. For saints of God, God always has yes, sir. the righteous on his mind. Yeah. But the scripture says in Psalm 84 and in verse number 11 that no good thing yeah. will I ever withhold from those of us who walk upright. Yes. Right. In other words, church, God is surely thinking about you. Yes. Because God knows the thoughts and the plans that he has towards you are good and not evil, and he will take you to your expected end. Yes. Now you can see why King David was so emphatic, energetic, and enthusiastic about exalting the name of God in spite of what things may have looked like at the present time. Church King David was truly saints of God personally, excited and eager to praise God, to thank God, and to worship God with all that was within him, from both his head to his toes, and didn't want to subsequently hold anything back because as I said earlier, that's exactly what God had done for him each and every day of his life, just like he does for us. They, therefore, David wholeheartedly believed and let the church say reciprocity. Yes. Reciprocity. Yes, David wholeheartedly believed in reciprocity, brother Miles, because he knew that the God he served and the God he worshipped wasn't holding anything back. Therefore, why did he in return hold back the praise that was rightfully due God's name? Because you must understand this afternoon, church, that reciprocity means that when somebody has done something special for you, sooner than later, Deacon Latif, you ought to do everything that you can to in return to return the favor. Yeah. Yeah. And bless that individual beyond belief. Uh -huh. But you must understand that there is an established relationship and rapport where reciprocity comes into play. Yeah. In other words, God and David had a thing 
going on. And I'm not talking about that song, me and Mrs. Jones, we got a thing going on. Because the one that can't stay in that particular song, saints of God, because it deals with cheating. Yeah. But saints of God, David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. And David knew the love language of God because saints of God, he knew the power of prayer. Because he knew that prayer is powerful. That prayer is productive. And that prayer plays off in the lives of believers. He knew all about the power of praise and worship. That's why he was able to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually yeah. be in my mouth. And he last but not least knew about the precepts of God. Because he knew that God's word was a lamp unto his feet and a light unto his hands. Yeah. Therefore they indeed had a, let the church say, thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. So I tell you, when y'all just think about each other. Since David was a man after God's own heart, and when God thought about David, in spite of his faults, in spite of his faults, and in spite of his failures, both of them got all bubbly. Yeah. They all joy on the inside. Yeah. That's why I like to see, indeed, Reverend Willis talk about his wife, Jermaine. Yes, sir. Because, indeed, he may have had a rough day on the job. But indeed, people might have called him everything but a child of God. Praise the saints of God, when I mention his wife, Julie, he gets all bubbly and right. overjoyed on the inside. In short, you know how excited and energetic and enthusiastic you get just talking about your boo and talking about your spouse and talking about your significant brother. Yes. That's why I want to stop here for a quick second. It asks you, Metropolitan, is there anybody in here this afternoon who wants to rise up and return the favor and give God some glory, give God some honor, and give God some praise with the fruit of your lips for the favor of God that's resting on your life right now because you know for yourself that if it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for the loving kindness of God, which is coming in life itself, and if it wasn't for the mercy of God, you wouldn't be here right now. Take some God, what you want to endure. Open up your mouth. You want to indeed wave your hand and you want to indeed stop your feet and let the Lord know that you want to return the favor and you want to give him more than what he has given you because he deserves all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen. Amen. Well, don't tell me about it, child of God. As a master teacher, God says, go ahead. And show your work. <laughs> and show your excitement about what he has done in your life down through the years. Because you can't afford to come up in here copying somebody else's work and praise. Unless you want to cheat and steal a page from David's praise and worship. And dance and color rug like David did here, there, and everywhere that the true and living spirit of God led him. Because you got to know, take some God, that when you don't want to hold nothing back, God is going to give you the liberty to go for what you know. Because God wants you to know, young people, that wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom, and justice for all. Because when the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Yeah. That's why the first thing that I want you to spiritually understand in this message is centered around the spiritual truth and reality. That if you don't want to, saints of God, hold nothing back as it pertains to your praise and worship experience, then you got to, here it is, wake up and write it down. Downright direct yourself to delight yourself in yeah. your divine delivery. Yeah. Right. Church, did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. I said that you got to down direct yourself yeah. to delight yourself in your divine delivery. Y'all yeah. looking at me saying, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. You got to down direct yourself mm -hmm. 
to delight yourself in your divine deliverer? Yes, you heard me right, boy. You got to command your heart to praise the Lord. You got to command your feet to do its things. And you got to command your hands to clap your hands continuously over and over and over and over again to God. Because when you just think about the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for you, you got to tell yourself, self, you got to get yourself together and you got to come into the house of the Lord and holler. You got to come into the house of the Lord and lift up your hands. You got to come into the house of the Lord and maybe be a robber, saints of God, because it's going to be a day when my dad, who can't walk very good, and I'm going to indeed see him running around this sanctuary, and I'm going to grab the microphone and say, we got a runner over here, and somebody else is going to join the relay race because they know for themselves that I'm running for Jesus in 99, and I have just won't do. I got to give God all the glory. That's why I'm demanding myself to praise the Lord in the midst of my trouble and in the midst of my deliverance. And a real sense, all I'm trying to teach you right along here, Metropolitan, is you definitely got to get yourself together if you want to draw closer to God and go to the next level and dimension in Him. But the truth of the matter is, you can't be coming up in God's house with the let the church say it, right? Right. Right. Complaining. Complaining. Mumbling and grumbling yeah. about how God hasn't done this and how God hasn't done that. But while God may have given you the strength to complain, you should never take God up on it. Because he's been just that good to you each and every day of your life. Oh no, my friends, God wants us to persistently come in here on the other hand and give him the glory. For he has, as verses 3 to 4 in today's sex, done three major things. Verses 3 to 4 points the picture in today's text. That we ought to come in here and give God all that we got. Because number one, he has forgave us. Amen. And say to God, you can't talk about the glory that I give God unless you know my particular story. Because I ain't been Mr. Goody Two-Shoe all of my life. But somebody in here knows that God has looked beyond my thoughts. And supply each and every one of my needs. And know my particular sins in the sea of forgetfulness never to rise no more. But not only has God forgiven us, I told you earlier, he has also healed us. Yes. Because somebody in here knows that he was wounded for our transgressions. Come on. Bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him and through his stripes. We are here. We are here. But he has also caused us to live again as we. Yes. Because somebody in here knows that while the devil may have come <laughs> to kill to steal and to destroy. God has come so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. That's why, beloved, when your friends, your colleagues, your co-workers, and your classmates get around the water cooler tomorrow and ask you, what did you do this weekend? You got to tell them like the young people and like Selena will tell them at Cash Tech on the road. I did, I did a thing on today. And that is, I thank God through my trial, I thank God through my tribulation, and I thank God through my test. Because I knew ultimately, as I exalted and magnified and glorified his holy name, oh high, that he will cause 
me to triumph. And I wonder, thanks of God, is there anybody in here today who wants to rise up and say that I did a thing on today? Because God let me know that when I come into the sanctuary of my God, that he will indeed make me more than a conqueror than him who first loved us. For first John chapter 4 and verse number 4 says that greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. Touch your neighbor and tell him, I'm not just going to win. I'm going to win big time because God is dwelling on the inside of me. Oh, I wonder, is there anybody in this house today who is truly grateful for the things that God has done? Is there anybody in this house today who is truly thankful for the victories that he has won? For I can go on and on and on and on about his grace. For the truth of the matter is, we can go on about our business and give him the glory because God has given us his grace. God has given us his goodness and God has given us his glory. For we serve an awesome and an almighty God who's worthy to be praised both from the rising of the sun until the going down of the sand. Is there anybody in here today that wants to demand yourself to praise your divine deliverer? Because when you think about how he was wounded, thanks of God, and how he died on that cross, it should open up your mouth because you know it should have been you because I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. Cross. That's why I sing that song. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to sing it to my God. Great. For you're all together lovely. Yes. And you're all together wonderful to me. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, I feel the spirit of the truth and living God in this house this afternoon. Come on. For God told me to tell you this Thanksgiving, in each and every day of your life, you really got a reason to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Therefore, don't you dare take God's grace for granted anymore. For saints of God, even before you stand up and worship God, he's going to turn around and make everything work for your good. But he promised in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28 that all things will work together for the good of them. Yeah. who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Yeah. In short, that's why and here's my second point to you this afternoon. You got to, if you truly want to thank him from delivering you from danger seen and unseen and you want to give him all that you got. This text, secondly, is so telling to teach us that you got to dig deep within yourself and drop out of praise even in the midst of your painful predicament. Uh, yes, you got to dig deep in yourself and draw out of praise even in the midst of your painful predicament. Because I told you earlier, you got to get yourself together. And when you are in worship, it's not about you in any shape, form, or fashion. It's all about Jesus. Because you want to see God moving mighty and much in your mouth. And the only thing that God wants you to do is open up your mouth. Because as I told you on oh, last week, miracles are made manifest when you move them with your mouth. Yes. Yeah. But a God we serve and a God we worship definitely deserves all of our attention and all of our admiration. Therefore, we got to Metropolitan stand up and acknowledge the amazing thing that he has brought forth in each and every one of our lives all day and every day while we've been here on earth. Because I know that I'm not the only one who can stand up and say, he woke me up this morning. Come on. And started me on my way. Oh, I wonder, is there anybody in here today? Gloria Jackson may not like the pastor singing, but saints of God, I don't know about you, but when I woke up this morning, I woke up this morning with my mind staying on Jesus. Yes, right. I woke up this morning with my mind staying on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind staying on Jesus. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, beloved. If we indeed get breath in our bodies right here and right now, that indeed ought to be our theme song as the people of God. Because if there is anybody in here today who knows that we have a Savior, a story, and a song, and there's nothing wrong with you waking up and thinking about Jesus, because there's nothing wrong with giving God all that you get. Because saints of God, He is indeed the God of our salvation. And somebody in here knows that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we'll be dead and sleeping in our grave. But God reached down from the balcony of heaven this morning and breathed breath in our body. And we therefore ought to glorify Him and song and in dance and show God some sign that we're truly grateful for what He's done for us. Down on Oh, I declare metropolitan unto you today that we can definitely depend on God. Yes. Through the storm, yes. through the rain, yes. through the sickness, and through the pain. Yes. For God is good and He's worthy to be praised yes. all day and every day. Yes. And church, if you don't get anything else from this little Sunday school message, I need you to catch this, saints of God. Because King David spiritually understood in this 103rd division of the song that true worship, let the church say true worship, true worship is in fact something that is deeply inward, not just an outside show where you are prompted by the pastor to clap your hands yeah. and to stuff your feet right. and to be on fire for God. Well, oh no, it's a whole lot more and deeper than that, Sister Jackie yeah, yeah. Because my grandmama used to say that when you feel the spirit moving yeah. all the time, Come on. Yeah. and God certainly has the complete custody of your heart, your soul, and your spirit. You can't be up in your kitchen and you can't be up on your job and give him a superficial, a superficial shout. That's all fake and phony. So just stop and think about it for a moment, church. God ain't been fake and phony with you for one second. For he has surely loved you with an everlasting love that is real, that is deep, and that is compassionate and authentic. And you mean to tell me that you can't gather in his house or in your house or in your living room and subsequently thank God with the fruit of your lips for all that he has done? David said, I will give God the glory, give God the honor, and give God the praise with my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let the church say, if you didn't come in here to worship God in spirit and in truth, and you didn't come in here to to worship God in the beauty of holiness, shame on you. You therefore better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yeah. touch somebody and tell them right here and right now that God says, yeah. Child, yeah. when you come in, when you come in, God wants you to go on in. Right. And give them all that you got. From the call to worship yes. to the benediction. Yes. But there shouldn't be a second in this service where you're not magnifying, exalting, yes. and glorifying God's holy name yes. with all that is within you. Yes. But the truth of the matter is, every day is a day of thanksgiving. Yes. But we surely have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Come on. Therefore, members of Metropolitan Baptist Church in Gooch, when you come in right. to 13110, 14th Street at Villa Vista, right. we got to give our master, let the church say, our maximum effort. Our yes. maximum yes. effort. And nothing less, Saints of God. Yes. Oh, I'm through now, church. Therefore, let me go ahead and give you my last and final point this afternoon. Because through David's determination and relentlessness on this day and every day to exalt and magnify the name of our God, we spiritually discovered, church family, last but not least, that when you know that God has personally been better and good to you, even on a bad day, yeah. listen, 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 wake up and write it down. 
Don't you dare disregard what he has divinely done for you down through the years and the deliverances that he has brought about in your life. For he has absolutely, through his anointing and his precious blood, yeah. deleted all of our disadvantages outright so that we can go outside and do what we do as the disciples and people of God. For if you want to be honest about it, church, all of us in here today, as I said earlier, should be dead and sleeping in our graves, saints of God, from the pulpit to the choir stand. But God, through his grace and his mercy, has given us another chance to live again. Therefore, we ought to emotionally give God the glory Give God the honor and give God the praise. Because I know that I'm not the only one in here today that's been a recipient of the grace and the mercy of God. Because I'm not ashamed to let you know, saints of God, that Jesus has made the difference in my life. And that is why I'm going to come in here and give Jesus all that I've got. And I'm going to come in here and sing my song and do my dance. Because is there any Everybody in here today that wants to join me in saying that Jesus, I'll never forget what you have done for me. Is there anybody in here today that wants to join me in saying that Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. And somebody in here showed us all the same because I know of the blind pigs you used to be in. And I know of the crack houses that you used to be in. Somebody in here should say that Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. No, never. Oh, I wonder, is that your song and word today that you're politic to? Because if it is, God says, you want to show some show love sign that you're grateful, but let's keep it real and let's keep it 100. When you react to everything else, saints of God, that's going on in your life. Therefore, why should you come into the house of the Lord and be all passive, be all quiet, and be all silent? No, the Bible, the Word of God says that the redeemed of the Lord say so. If God has picked you up, if God has turned you around, and if God has placed your feet on the solid ground, you ought to stand up on your feet and say so. Yes, you need to stand up and say so and give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that his name so richly deserves. Because somebody in here knows that Jesus is a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, a prince of peace, and a heavenly father. Somebody in here knows that Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Somebody in here who's standing up knows that there is there is no one like him, and you ought to be glad about that, saints of God, because Jesus has never forgotten about you. Jesus has never forsaken you, and Jesus has not left you behind. Therefore, in some form or fashion, you need to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, because the God we serve and the God we worship can do things in and through our lives which are exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 19 that God has promised to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus because somebody in here knows that it is through him that we live. It is through him that we move. And it is through him that we have our being. That's why with every breath I take and with every move I make, I want to lift up the name of my God for he's worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised.
to start all over again. Yes. I'm thankful for everything that he's done. Amen. I got clothes over my mama's house. Wow. Clothes over my house. Clothes at the church. Awesome. And I can make a selection of what I want to wear. Yeah. I wore this suit to make Sister Celeste Black Deaconess Black happy. Because she got tired of seeing her pastor wearing sweatsuits. But saints of God, if I lost all of that, it still had Jesus. I have enough to start all over again. Those are just side items. But the most important thing in my life is my salvation. In the relationship, in the rapport that I have with him. He's the best thing yeah. that has ever happened to me. And I can't wait, saints of God, when the day comes where I can see him face to face. Because my body is going to be right here. And I don't know if when my kids might have me on. I don't know, saints of God, what the water, if she's still here, what she'll have me on. All I know is that I'm going to be able to pull on the road yes. and tell the story of how I have overcome. Yes. The doors of the church are open as we all rest on our feet. If you're here today and you do not have a loving relationship with God, God says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You gotta direct yourself to get out your seat, to get on your feet, and come to Jesus, and watch him bring about a wonderful change in your life. Because I tell you, young people, in this 51 years of living, I haven't kept myself. God has kept me in the midst of it all. have passed away. Yeah. And behold, all things have become new. And we thank God that indeed Isaac has made a decision that will bring about a deliverance in his life. Yes. That he, God in his sovereignty and his divine wisdom has deleted all of his disadvantages. And somebody in here knows you ought to thank God that God has deleted your ex-files. Yeah. I don't want to tell you what my ex-files have been, saints of God. But all of that has been thrown into the garbage. Because you have decided to live for Jesus. Now, I was going to ask you, Isaac, I, indeed, you see that lady over there? We need a young person to come to the church on Friday to help us decorate the church. You don't have to do no decoration, but they need you to go up and downstairs to get the decorations. So... Pastor, if I buy you a, a nice meal, it don't have to be a biggie bag, it'd be something bigger than that. But I want you to know we need young, strong, black men. Yeah! Black men like you. Yeah. To our nice friends of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we can indeed 
go crazy for the Lions when they run up the score. We can go crazy over a young man getting his life. We're going to get your name sent to God. And if you're available on Friday, we will give you a call and let you know what time. Saints of God, it's now giving time. We ask that you give your best offering for the advancement of the kingdom of God. You heard of all of the things that we are trying to do by the close of the year. And none of these things have anything to do with us. Because God blesses us, we're thankful, saints of God, to be blessings. Yeah. The gifts for the angel tree are not for us. It's for those whose parents who are incarcerated, saints of God, who don't have any hope. And you have heard the testimonies in the letters of how individuals are grateful for the Metropolitan Baptist Church. Yes. I've actually, even before I go home with my surprise, drop off a meal, a food box, and a person who said, Pastor, we're struggling over here. It's not about me and my comfort. God has supplied every one of my needs. My wife said, well, I mean, what you want to eat today? I said, I thought you were going to eat with your girlfriend. I said, I was planning to go out and eat. She said, no, baby, I'll make you a meal. Wow. I want you to spend your money. <laughs> and if you don't have it in the refrigerator right now, she'll go out and get it for me and everything. I do the shopping in the house. So I like to get sales, Saints of God. I'm saying. So Saints of God, I ask that you give your best offer. I worry some of my members to death. I had to go to a funeral on yesterday and somebody wanted to be a blessing to the church. We had just left the church from the District 5 City Council meeting on Friday and within 40 minutes I was texting one of my members saying, I can't be there to receive some clothes that an outsider wanted to distribute and give to the church. And they said, I'll gladly because we are to serve the Lord with gladness. And in 2025, we ought to do more for God, saints of God. Amen. And we ought to show some sign that we're grateful. I'm preaching the funeral on Saturday, and then I'm going to be throwing on my sweatsuit, going down to Port Field. I'll meet you down there. You can ride with us, Selena, if you want to go to see our cast tech win the state championship. Because that's what we do. We're winners, saints of God. And God has made us more than conquerors. The ushers are going to come. We ask that you give your best offer.
And just because we didn't get our way, we're going to be thankful in 2025 as well, saints of God. We ought to surely be thankful then. Because the word Emmanuel, what the choir is singing now, just simply means that God is with us. And as we go into this Advent season, God wants you to know that he is with us, saints of God, in every adverse situation. We thank you for those who have given to the cause of our uh, campaign that ended today, where we distribute the talents and indeed we sold back into the church. We thank God for Sister Arlene Allen. She forgot her thank you card because of the death of her puppy. But she wanted to thank each and every one of you who participated and supported her in the bank sale on yes, I mean last Sunday. Did a tremendous job and she texted me and said, I want to give half of it back to the church. And I said, no, we want it to be a blessing to you. So I, I couldn't tell you as a pastor what to give back, but just so 10% or whatever, and indeed God will do an exceeding thing. We're going to have another one of those bake sales at another different time because we want to be able to be supportive of one another, saints of God. So indeed, saints of God, I pray that I will see you on Wednesday night. I pray that I will see you in Bible study. We will have our last Bible study. If the Lord says the same on December 1st, we have been truly having a good time in Bible study, saints of God, searching the scriptures and letting the spirit speak to us because God wants you to know that there can be no true hearing without you heeding what the spirit says unto you because God is telling us where to head in 2025 and we have to be able to do more. We have, must have a ministry mindset. That's why I thank God that my wife said to me, I'm planning a skating party for our kids at Metropolitan Baptist Church because we got to grow them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord because they are our future leaders, saints of God. And we'll be hearing more about that later on. But you need to ask yourself, what can I do to praise God and advance the kingdom of God. Deacon Latif was so serious and sincere. I had a meeting to go to. He said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I said, well, I'm gonna be out of town. I'm about to go out of town. But I saw the sincerity of his heart. So he met me in his office. He said, Pastor, I wanna do more because I don't wanna be a hindrance to the kingdom of God. I wanna be a help. And I need that same spirit and energy from each and every one of us in this house. We may all stand, saints of God.
Spirit to show us the way.